Amigos, ¿cómo están? Una edición más de Auto 060 aquí en Cristina Radio Network. Yo soy Javier Mota. Eh, vamos a tener un show muy interesante. Hoy vamos a hablar de las nuevas tecnologías, lo que está sucediendo con los autos, que ahora ya no son simplemente un medio de transporte, sino que se han convertido en parte en una extensión de la casa, en parte en la extensión de la oficina, en parte en centros de comunicación. Y vamos a hablar con una experta de el eh, Texas Transport Institute, Transportation Institute, para que, que nos va a explicar si en realidad todos estos sistemas que están integrados a los autos funcionan y son eh, realmente seguros y agregan eh, un nivel de seguridad a los autos. También vamos a hablar con un viejo amigo, Lenny Larrea, en el segundo segmento, sobre los autos más baratos de tener y mantener acá en Estados Unidos. Vamos a tener una entrevista también con un representante de General Motors que tiene una iniciativa muy interesante sobre para eh, exponer y, y promover el fútbol acá, el fútbol soccer, no el fútbol americano acá en Estados Unidos. Y en el último segmento, otra entrevista también sobre tecnología en los autos y algo de lujo, o la entrevista con John Temerain de Lula V, eh, una compañía que alquila autos exóticos aquí en Miami. Así que now we're going to switch back to in English uh, because we have Christine Jagger from the Texas Transportation Institute. How are you, Christine? Christina, are you there? I am. Hi, how are you? Good. So, um, as I was mentioning in the introduction in Spanish here on the show, uh, the Institute conducted a, a study about the new technology in cars, specifically about uh, the voice command to do texting, right? It's, uh, and, and apparently the findings are not very, I mean, probably not what consumers were expecting. Uh, right. What we found was that um, the reaction times for drivers when they were texting was about two times slower compared to when they were not texting. And the amount of time that drivers spent looking at the roadway ahead was significantly less when they were texting. And it didn't matter which method they were using to send the text, whether it was manual texting or using a voice-to-text application on their cell phone. So um, this includes... Uh Uh, like any kind of phones because I mean there are different kind of phones like the the iPhone for example the picture that is on your web page is an iPhone but like and most of the phones nowadays are like that but uh, for example the old Blackberries who have like a kind of a little keyboard that's even worse I guess right um, well we I can only really speak on what we tested you know because um, as far as like when you do research you're you're never like This one study does, you know, it does the final word. So, you know, we, I know. and everything just, changes so much, right? This is kind of the right? first of its kind. And so we just tested um, an iPhone using Siri and then a an Android smartphone using Zlingo. And so with those two applications, um, that's, those were the results that we found. So these are uh, applications from the actual phones, not uh, systems included in the cars? Exactly. Yeah, that's that's kind of a whole different um, topic of, of research. So yeah, so we did not have anything installed in the vehicle. This was these were applications on on the cell phone, and so the drivers kind of have the, the choice whether to hold the phone while using it or um, to set it down. You know, it just however however they w wanted to naturally use it. Yeah. And um, so can you uh, please explain a little bit how the, the study was conducted, for how long, how many people, and those, those kind of things? Well, absolutely, yeah. The, the study um, was conducted over about three, three weeks to four weeks, and um, we had 43 participants drive an instrumented vehicle on a closed course, and they drove the, co the course four times, okay. once while not texting, once while texting manually, and then two more times using the two different voice-to-text applications. And we measured how long it took drivers to complete each text messaging task and the amount of time that drivers spent looking at the roadway ahead. And then we also had drivers respond to a light that came on at random intervals in order to measure um, how aware they were of their surroundings. Yeah, and uh, so the the guideline or the the time, like the two second time frame for people to take the the eyes out of the road, 
Um, what's that equivalent to when you're traveling, let's say, I don't know, if 45, 60 miles an hour? Did, did you test that? Um, we did not. We had our participants driving at 30 miles per hour okay. um, just because we wanted to make sure everyone was safe. And, you know, that's why we had it set up on a closed course so there weren't there was no other traffic to you know potentially cause an issue so it was a it was a very controlled setting just to try to protect our, our participants yeah. but you are right that you know depending on what speed you're traveling if if you are um you know like if you take that let's say five seconds because um one of the common um results from a study in Virginia is that the average amount of time it takes to send a text message is 4.6 seconds. And so, you know, if you just kind of round up to five seconds, you have traveled more than the length of a football field when you're traveling at highway speeds. And so if you're not looking at the roadway for that, then it's like you're driving that amount of distance blindfolded, which is pretty, pretty scary. Yeah, a lot of things can happen in those uh, four seconds, and most people don't even think about it. And it's it's a it's kind of an epidemic now around the country. I don't know um, your institute. Uh, we're talking to Christine Jagger from the Texas Transportation Institute. She is an associate transportation researcher there. And uh, I don't know does Texas have laws against doing this because in Florida there aren't, and so many other states. I think there's like 35 states that have rules, but uh, the rest don't. Uh, right, and Texas is currently considering um, passing laws that for for banning text messaging while driving um it, it hasn't been passed officially yet so um but still to be determined but there are certain cities in the state of texas that do have um city ordinances that prohibit text messaging while driving and you know with various conditions and so um yeah i believe the city of austin and san antonio are, are examples of that yeah, uh, I understand you. You have another study on the way examining the motivations and attitudes of uh, distracted drivers. Is this related to texting or, may, or like all the other distractions, which are many in the car? Um, it, it's related, um, and that's actually um, I'm not the person involved with that study, so I, I only really know that it exists. I don't really know the details of what they're doing, but but yeah, TTI is is definitely pursuing. Um, research related to distracted driving because it's it's a very very big issue right now and and as technology continues to hit the marketplace you know it's, it's important to try to ask these questions of you know what technologies and and how these technologies affect driver behavior and safety yeah uh, can you talk a little bit about the institute itself i mean how long it's been in, in place and what kind of other work they, they do and uh this is even though it is in texas it really affects or impacts the, your findings findings impact all the country all the drivers around the country right uh yes yes so um tti um we were founded in 1950 and um we Basically, our, our state agency um, under Texas a and University, and so we receive funding from a variety of organizations, um, even local organizations, all the way up to federal organizations. And um, we just our our job is just to conduct uh, transportation research about a variety of topics. And um, in particular, I, I'm a part of the Center for Transportation Safety. That's that's part of DTI. And, um, you know, so we, we're definitely focused on the driver and traffic safety aspects of, of the transportation field. Yeah. I saw that this week the NHTSA, the National Highway Transportation and Safety Administration, uh, published some new uh, guidelines for, for um, minimizing the distractions. Was this related to, re to your release of your study? Because it was pretty close. Because pretty much are the same. I mean, like... People have to really pay attention while they're driving. Were those related? I mean, is this a reaction to the study that the, your institute did? Um, it was unrelated. It was it was just a coincidence that it came out around the same time. <laughs> yeah, and uh, those recommendations are uh, that uh, pretty much the same, right? Like basically, people should don't do do don't text, and even th or even though the method they're using, they're pretty much being distracted uh, in, in in different ways while doing the, that. Yeah, you're right. The, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is, is a very big proponent of trying to reduce um, distracted driving related crashes, and they have a, a very powerful campaign to try to um, address that issue. And so, um, yeah. <laughs>
they're doing good work. Yeah. And uh, do you think that the new applications were like, because manufacturers are trying to implement, for example, Siri into their own system, do you think that that will reduce the risk of uh, or the, the time of distraction while doing something with the phone? You know, I, I, I guess that would be, I, I would just be speculating, but um, yeah, of course, you know, because there, we don't know there how is it is, definitely right? a lot of, um, that, that's definitely an important question to address. And, you know, I believe that there is a need for additional research to be conducted, especially as all of these new technologies hit the market and, and you know, auto manufacturers, you know, are considering what to install and, and um, you know, cell phone developers are also trying to determine what applications are, are available. And, you know, I just, I, I think that when you conduct research, it's just important to try to um, answer those questions and then um, hope that that can help educate everyone about about these technologies and, and how they might affect the driver's safety um, because a, a lot of it you know is not is not counter is not um, intuitive about how to use yeah, all you these have to devices, learn a lot so. yeah you have to learn how to use it and it takes a while a long time Definitely. okay this was uh, Christina Jaeger from the Texas Transportation Institute thank you very much for your time and uh, for spreading your knowledge and the results of the study we're going to publish it on our Facebook page so our audience can, can and take a deeper look at it. And uh, thank you very much for your time again. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Esta fue Cristina Jagger de la Texas Transportation Institute que publicó, como estábamos diciendo en la entrevista, este estudio en el que nos dicen que enviar mensajes de texto, ya sea de forma manual o utilizando el sistema del, por ejemplo, en el, en el iPhone, que es el Siri, haciéndolo con el comando de voz, en realidad no ayuda en nada, hay que dejar de hacerlo, no hay que manejar y enviar mensajes de texto, aun cuando no tengas el teléfono en la mano, cuando estés usando la aplicación de Siri del iPhone, en realidad la distracción es igual o peor. Y como decíamos en coincidencia esta semana, la Administración Nacional de Seguridad y Transporte en las carreteras eh, publicó una, una sus recomendaciones nuevamente para que realmente se tiene que dejar de hacer esto cuando se maneja. Así que esta ha sido una entrevista muy interesante. Otra vez gracias a Christine Jagger del Texas Transportation Institute. No se vayan, yo soy Javier Mota, esto es Auto 060.